Grand-Rising, my friends, welcome back, been thinking about you, you know you're doing well, if you're new, hello, stock market didn't do too well today, it was down a little bit, S&P, uh, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, all less than half a percent. Um, some companies doing well. Google did okay for the day, up a little bit. Boeing did really well. And yeah, Tesla was earlier and ended the day a little bit positive as well. So kind of a dull day for the stock market. Crypto, a little bit better here if you're a fan of the cryptos. It was down to, remember, 44,000 yesterday. Bitcoin's back up to 46,394, Ethereum 3,455, Cardano at $2.52, Binance at 420 and 80 cents. Solana was up to 209 at one point and now is at 192, $192.92, still up almost 50% on the week. Solana has been killing and uh, XRP rebound. Remember, it was eighty cents. Now it's up to a dollar ten. So a, a wide swing. We could tell it's being manipulated. In that I, go, I told you that when I first saw it, how it was being manipulated with the SEC um, making its, you know, denying the motions to release the the holdings of its uh, members in terms of their cryptocurrencies and the fact that they're legislating on the same issue as if that is not whoa 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 i did not know algorand was went nutty like this it's up almost 100 percent on the week 34 to two dollars and 27 cents wow overnight it moved up to number 17 top 20 coin yo we've been talking about these coins i hope people have been picking up some but remember this is not any type of advice that you can construe in such a way. You can't take advice from me if I tell you you can't. I think legally, not financial advice, not spiritual relationship, medical or anything advice. Don't ever forget that. With that said, boy, if you was buying some of the stuff I've been talking about, you Tezos, ooh, Tezos up at 30. <laughs> Tezos and Cosmos are up almost 30, 25, between 25 and 30% for the day. And there it, it is, it is not looking bad out here in the crypto world. I mean, you know, we, we knew that. And remember, it's still early. So imagine five years from now, but by now you go probably just see me come beaming in like, woo! <laughs> just speaking in, in codes and light because woof -ah. how much ETH been burned ooh probably another well so yeah we passed uh, easily passed 250,000 at this point the Ethereum continues to burn look at that high point right now the blocks are at and then it just pushes the price up over time Jumping in too, but before we do that, because here we're about that positivity, you know, none of us can make it by ourselves in reality. It's, it, we are social animals. It was a book about that several years ago. And each of us has someone that reached our very essence and inspired that to be greater. For that person, those individuals, why don't you just write some kind about them down in the comment section and then forward them this video and say, hey, look what I wrote about you. It, you mean a lot to me. Now, I made sure that it's out there forever on the Internet. And you can do it every day for different people and we'll repeat for the same people. It's no, don't, don't limit yourself in the energy and goodwill you put out there. Okay? Okay? We good? We good, good. Brian Armstrong responds to SEC threats to shut down Coinbase yield products. 
This is why I think Tezos, Cosmos, and Algorand are going through the roof today because I'll get to it in a second. Part of it, part of the reason, because um, people became more aware of it, I imagine. Crypto Exchange CEO, Coinbase CEO, Brian Armstrong responded Tuesday evening to plan enforcement by the U.S. Security Exchange Commissions pertaining to the firm's recently announced yield generating product. So they have a product. I'm just going to summarize some of this. Coinbase has a product called Lin, where you will be able to, you know, you have stake, basically hold USDC on its platform and earn good yield, like even to the double, uh, I want to say um, more than 10%. I mean, yeah, more than in a double digits. And of course, if you hold the same equivalent amount of dollars in an American bank, you get 0.004, no, not 00, 0.04%, but orders of magnitude less. So why wouldn't you switch your money over? And so the SEC is doing all they can to stop this. So Armstrong said the exchange contacted SEC about its yield product and the SEC told Coinbase that the offering is a security, but gave no guidance on the compliance with existing laws. In a tweet, Armstrong added, they refuse to tell us why they think it's a security and instead subpoena a bunch of records from us. We comply. Demand testimony from our employees. We comply. And then they tell us that they will be suing us if we proceed to launch with zero explanation as to why. It made me think of that. And, and we did nothing. And then when they and, and, and what happened when they came for us? What happened when they came for us? According to Armstrong, the SEC refused to meet with him when he visited D.C. The SEC was the only regulator that refused to meet with me, saying we're not meeting with any crypto companies. This was right after we became the first crypto company to go public in the U.S. Oh, man. So if they launched it, the SEC said they would sue. Despite Coinbase keeping land off the market and providing detailed information, the SEC won't, still won't explain why they see a problem. Rather, they have told us that if we launch it, they intend to sue. So well, I, I kind of almost say, you know, nobody wants to get sued for no reason, you know. Hence me saying all that other stuff earlier about the, the not your advisor. I am not your advisor, not your advisor. I ain't your advisor. I'm playing with different things. The uh, but just to see what the lawsuit would say. Like what what what's the basis? You know, it, do they have any merit? Can they have um, standing in the courtroom? What is the basis? You're kind of curious just to figure to see. You know, what what is the actual basis? Nah, people go take away from us if y'all do. You, you go take people away from us if y'all do that. It's called competition, baby. In addition to plans to offer a yield on USDC held by the company, Coinbase offers other yield generating services via proof of stake protocols like Ethereum 2.0 and Tezos. So that's you can probably figure out why I think now is that. When people started reading about this, hearing this and understanding that you can you can already earn. And they say the difference between the coins and USD is that you're staking the coins and getting and gaining your interest. I'm putting quotation signs up for those who are just listening. And gaining interest versus I don't know what they consider with the USDC because it is a crypto coin, stable coin, but coin nonetheless. So. You know, that's why I think people are probably now seeing that they can put money into those systems. And, and you can always say who goes, who's who's going to do better or more because people have are in, you know, from a psychological standpoint, are envious of holes. People do not like fractions. Most people, don't, you know, I've been trying to tell my friends just to buy fractions of Bitcoin for years. Like quit trying to worry about getting a whole one and they won't buy any because they can't buy one. And, you know, so they're rather, oh, but what about this other one that's two cents? What about this other one I can get? Like, you know, and, and you try to explain to them, some of it can be a good idea. A lot of it's bad ideas. But you just, you, you stop, you have to learn to think exponentially and stop seeing, you have to learn to get past some of your hidden biases. And, I, and I'm going to 
do a deep dive on that to the investor mindset of what's calculated risk versus being reckless and how also being too fearful can hinder you in your growth. Because imagine you just throw your money in the bank getting that 0.04%, not knowing if you put 10000 into uh, th Tether. So you, you put 10000 not Tether, but USDC. You put 10000 into USDC, uh, USDC, and you get, by the end of the year, 11000 And so, you know, and then, it, you know, keep, keep doing that. Let's just say 10%, not even going higher than that. But you put it in, you, you know, your bank, 10000 and you get point. Oh, so 10% to give you 100, 1% to give you, no, 1,000 actually, so you 11,000. 1% to give you 100, that 04 will give you $4 on your 10,000. So $4 versus $1,000 earned in a year. Who in their right mind, right? Because remember, on that 10,000, that's going to be, if you don't do anything, that's going to be 900 and, you know, this past year, been, it'd be 900, no, I'm sorry, $9,400 if you did nothing in terms of the spending power versus, you know, usually like 9600 Take that 4% out versus 6% for this past year. But you can add 10% on, then, hey, you cover, you know, the, the average out is 6%. You have, you, instead of losing 4%, of your money in terms of inflation, you gain 6% on it and it compounds over time. And that's how money grows and it's about being steady and focused on tasks. DeFi tokens hit hard as crypto market correction continues. As we can see, this was from a couple of days ago and, and, the, and the market can change that fast because they were saying how, of how not just Solana, but you know, Solana just been kind of doing its own thing. You have to, um, at the moment, it's, it's literally decoupled from the entire market, which, hey, I love. Um, you know, not, you know, completely decoupled. From, but it's been decoupled for like a day. It'll be about a couple of days, a week or so. It, it seemed like it's been on its own agenda. But Polkadot, Uniswap, Pancake, Swap, you know, the these Ave Compound, these are the DeFi coins that they were thinking that were dropping, but you know they're 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 hovering and doing well. Uh, Polkadot being at thirty dollars or above has been in the twenties all of last month, so moving in the right direction. And what do we say? Pancake at twenty dollars and fifty two cents. So DeFi tokens did take a hit, greater than, and that's you know sometimes these other projects where you're going to have Bitcoin over time. Now I'm using hand motions to show. Like on a graph, Bitcoin is going to have its, its, its fluctuations are going to, you know, kind of steady out and become a little bit more gradually on the up over time as it matures as an as an asset. And, you know, I expect Ethereum, Cardano, XRP, the, 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 the main big giant coins for years, you can, will see doing that. And you'll still have some of these other projects that will still fluctuate, you know, back and forth, depending on hype, depending on exploit somebody being able to, to uh, trick the system in some way you know anything can happen you got to be prepared so even though the DeFi tokens did take a little bit of it they are coming back up institutional inflows into bitcoin see significant increase after eight week dry spell so two months so the months of probably june july or maybe in July, August, probably even starting with May when a big sell-offs hit, which was silly. That's when you should be buying in. The you're starting to see the institution money fly back in because and follow the smart money. If they're putting money in now as this price is going up, they're not doing that because they like to lose money. They like to get all of the money. So I'm sure they've been buying a Bitcoin as people have been selling it. Of course, now they're saying that the Bitcoin dominance is falling. Let's look at that over here. Bitcoin dominance is at 41.2. No, still. Ethereum at 19.2. Bitcoin and Ethereum are still kind of at their, where their places are at. Uh, 
Most notable to all coins has been Solana, an increasing favorite among investors. They have um, they have smart contracts, NFTs on Solana. So people, the NFT market been blowing up on there lately. I think Steve Harvey put one of the one of the NFT from Solana uh, on his um, Twitter profile. The asset saw weekly inflows that totaled 13.2 million last week alone. So now, is it too late to get in Solana? No, it's not too late. Would I get in now? No, I'll wait for a pullback. You know, if you hadn't been in already, had a position, it is doing this. Now, could it could it go way higher from where it's at? Well. It is at a 56,000, 50, sorry, 56 million um, market cap right now. And for it to double, it would go past Cardano. And that would be, you know, roughly 380. For it to 10 times to get to that, it would have to bypass where Ethereum is at now. Is it going to do that one day? Yeah, probably. More than likely, right? Ethereum will probably grow. and Solana would be where Ethereum is at now. So, you know. Now, if you think it's going to do it in a week or two, nah. But if you in a, in, a, in the long run for this, like you should be, then, you know, answer the question for you. Panama unveils bill to make Bitcoin legal tender. And this is just one congressman the day after El Salvador. You know, he's probably trying to capitalize off of it and get some get some pubs, publicity. But this Panamanian Congressman Gabriel Silvia introduced a bill designed to provide legal, regulatory and fiscal certainty to the use, holding and issuance of digital value and crypto assets in the Republic of Panama. So we will see how that will go in terms of I'm sure it had to be. Well, I'm not, you know, exactly know how Panama runs their system if they. Um, you know. The take the bill to committee and then that bill has to go to, you know, how we do it in America where it takes all day. So we will keep an eye on how Panama decides to do what they decide to do with their cryptocurrency legislation down there. Moving on to a bit of technology or sliding into a little bit of tech news. Mercedes new car reads driver's mind in milestone of merging man and machine. The all electric Mercedes vision AVTR features an array of incredible features. I'm not going to get their publicity that they would go there. Talking about how they, they discussed here how Elon has pioneered self-driving cars driven by artificial intelligence as well as computer interface controlled by the human brain. Speaking of Neuralink and yeah, I'll do I'll do a Neuralink talk just to show if anybody haven't seen monkey Paul. I'll, screen a little bit of that video on here but um not today but i'm saying soon mercedes has a car basically where you put on a probably a headset that can read encephalograms brain waves and they even said you you kind of train it you look around the dash to pull off his high-tech magic the driver needs to wear a helmet with electrodes that detect brain activity and translate it to it into impulses that re relate to different aspects of the car control systems. You train the BCI, the brain computer interface, by thinking about the various components of the car while a computer projects lights onto the dashboard. As you think about each one in turn, the computer tracks how your brain is working at the exact moment and maps it onto that system. So. This, if you ever seen this concept car that can move sideways, the wheels can move, allow the car to almost crab walk it is, you know, the concepts which they're going to, you know, eventually try to implement into reality are very, very nice. Uh, brain computer interface technology works completely independent of speech and touch. Opens up revolutionary possibilities for intuitive interaction with the vehicle. So we will see. And they're looking to get new battery material based on graphene, organic cell chemistry, so they can try to avoid. Because a lot of the batteries we use now with the lithium, cobalt, nickel, um, iron, phosph phosphate, I think phosphate, a lot of the, some of the, some of, not all, not all, definitely not, but. The mining techniques are not the best in terms of the environmental impact. And I'm being, you know, I'm not an expert in that, so I don't want to say like, oh, they're horrible or they're not. 
So I know my limitations and, you know, we will just see what the future holds and everyone trying to figure out better ways to extract these materials in a healthy, not healthy literally, but healthy doesn't make sense, in a, I guess a more healthier way for the planet, I guess is what my brain was thinking of. And that's true because we want to protect our planet. This may be the first step in curing PTSD with a pill. Now, this is pretty cool. This company, uh, this lady, well, let me read it here. Um, right now, treatments for PTSD range from virtual reality to electronic brain stimulation, simula you know, stimulation to hall uh, hallucinogens and ecstasy. But while these can lessen symptoms, they don't offer a direct cure. And that's true. I mean, a lot of times people will be like, oh, the doctors don't want to cure anything because you can get paid off the treatment. That's you, unless you're dealing with a sociopath, any physician I come across. And I think I may have said this before, and I'm just keep repeating things. Cause that's what we do. Butcher words, repeat things. And um, uh, and look up everything. Don't trust anything. Unless you're a sociopath. Or psychopath. You don't want people to get sick. You want people to be better and not have to bother. <laughs> not say bother, but you know, it's not a good. You don't want people to get sick or stay sick. Nobody wants that, unless, like I said, they got some real internal problems and and a, a disconnection from the spiritual plane. But anyway, Doctor Jennifer. Perusinian, I'm butchering that. I'm so butchering that. Founder of Neuro, uh, Neurovation, Neurovation, like that, like Innervation, um, Innervation, Neurovation Lab say PTSD, PTSD has a unique biomarker called GLUT A1. It is a protein as part of a glutamate receptor system, which helps memory formation, but trauma can also spur the creation of GLUT A1. In her doctoral thesis, she found that rats subjected to traumatic experiences had more, and when it was blocked, they seem to do better, but they were also still able to develop. Because, okay, so the key of it is, okay, say you can block the fear receptor, but then you're not fearful of a car coming at you or loud noise saying you should duck and run. You know, so fear is a normal, healthy response. But this, her work found that it was uh, the animals still displayed a healthy reaction to new frightening stimuli. The key, because it's important to retain ability to be scared by actual threats, you know. So now she is getting some funding from the Air Force and from the Army to develop her, her model and target this protein. And if it works, which would be awesome, you'd be able to take individuals who have disordered fear response to past occurrences and lessen or completely get rid of that problem. And then, you know, move on. <laughs> Today's the day of just a billion and one distractions, uh, but okay, I guess a future reference I learned to cut everything off as I'm in the midst of this. I don't believe you bothered that much, but never know. All right, I'm uh, gonna dip out today. Is a bit of a bit of a quicker because in about 13 minutes I'm trying to get one of these or two of these. We'll see. 0 0.05 Ethereum, TB Apes. Um, just looking at what I'm going to do is put out of some NFTs that I'm looking at saying I'm trying to be part of uh, and get and grab some if I can, because there are some great projects right now. Project errors that I think are going to be huge going forward in the future. But I know nothing of this, so don't take this with no advice. I'll just try to see what everybody else is hyping around. You know, was the the one of the biggest ones that people are not. Nobody's talking about this one, which is crazy because I know everybody probably just hoping nobody else know about it, so they everybody be quiet. <laughs> is this sneaky vampire syndicate? You can see the floor price now. It's not even out yet. The the public is being minted right now. The public sale for this. The public sale for this is on Sunday. They were going to do it on Saturday, but then they said they, yeah, I go, this is what I do. I go to Discord and find out about 
this stuff. So if you're not on Discord, download Discord. All this stuff is free. You make your little account. You join all their Discords. So you you get you have to kind of figure out how to navigate these uh, different chat rooms. But long and short of it is that this server has thirty five thousand people trying to get into it or in, into the server. I'm sorry that are interested, and so they are going to do a pre sale. Wait, hold on. Let me see what the, how they explain how the actual thing is going to be. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So the public sale will commence 24 hours after the pre-sale. And the pre-sale is going to... Um, let me see where they say it at. Uh, okay, so they, they had a pre-sale. If you had a, you got lucky to get picked. You got you got the chance to mint two of them for, for 0 0.08 Ethereum. 0 0.8. They are going for 2. Point, what is that? 2.18 right now? 2.18. You could mint one if you got picked in the pre-sale for 0 0.08. And they're going for 2.18 now. The public sale hasn't even happened yet. The public sale is going to happen on Sunday. I'm looking for where they were saying it at. Um, okay, our public sale will begin at 1 p.m. Eastern on. This was saying that it was going to be on Saturday night uh, on 9/11, but then it came out and said, "Hey, you know, we everyone's saying that you know 9/11 is, is you know some discussion. We decided to, to delay the public launch by one day, and now they're going to. I don't know what that was." Now they're going to um, blah, 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 um, hold it on Sunday at 1 p.m. So uh, I know the ETH war is over this, and that means when you try to go buy it, and everybody, it's going to be so much Ethereum, almost going to be probably one or two Ethereum and gas fees just to try to send in a bid that you may not get. So, um, you know, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a busy weekend. Actually, you know, I, I'll probably do really quickly over that because this weekend is going to have Crypto Dads tomorrow, uh, Guardians of the Metaverse on, what's the, is that their name? This was coming up. Crypto Dads tomorrow at 5 o'clock this uh a chat and it has 32,000 members in this discord for 10,000 um what you call it guardians on saturday they have 23,000 in theirs i think this nifty riots i can't remember what day i want to say maybe like tuesday or something but their artwork is gorgeous and oof uh, the Sneaky Vampire is on Sunday. It is going to be a crazy weekend. So I'm going to let y'all go now, but keep your eyes open. This NFT market is crazy. These are probably going to, I think these are like the people, and I'm not, I got to look into it, but I think they're like we're involved in the board eight. That's why it has so much hype behind it, but don't quote me on that. With that said, I love you, you love you, God loves us, that is all that matters.